Woo -hoo -hoo, you guys. This week is not coming to play. Just prepare yourselves. Can you guys feel this energy? Like, holy shit, something huge is going to happen. The intensity of this right now, like, wow. What is up, my fellow weird ones out there? My black sheep, my star children, my outcast. What is mother effing up in this? bitch. Ooh. Well, if you're new here, my name is Tani Michelle and welcome to my little corner of the internet over here. Welcome to my little channel. channel. <laughs> so in this video, we are talking about this crazy ass week. What is this week? What, what day am I on here? November 15th, the week of November 5th. I don't know why I'm like doing dances over here, but we have a Taurus lunar eclipse this week, which is the focal point of this video, but we also have a ton of other shit up in the sky going on. It is not just the Taurus lunar eclipse that we are talking about in today's video. In this video, I break down what the cosmos could be symbolizing for us here on Earth in our reality, the things that we can notice, some worldly and global predictions, and then I will briefly go over each sign your rising sign will resonate most for that but you want to watch this first part of the video as i always say because this is the foundation for the rest of the video so if you're missing out on this first part you're you're missing out on a lot also it is so freaking important especially for this video that you comment down below let me know how you're feeling these energies what your rising sign is at least before you leave this video please 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 do that because i am a nosy bitch. I am invested and I want to know what the hell is going on with you guys. <laughs> this energy is just so insane and I want to know how you guys are feeling it. There's just such a ominous energy in the air. It's like you know something really big is going to happen but you don't know where it's coming from but you can just feel it. Like that energy is so fucking profound right now. Like if you're tapped in, if you are psychic AF or just empathic or very sensitive to energy, I'm sure you can feel it. Okay, so I am gonna put my chart on the screen. Basically, as you can see here, we have the moon in the sign of Taurus, which this lunar eclipse is a full moon lunar eclipse. That is happening on the 19th, very, very early in the morning, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So basically, we know this is a full moon because the sun is opposite the moon in the sign of Scorpio, right? So we've been in Scorpio season, meaning that the sun is traveling through the sign of Scorpio. The deeper, more intense and transformational emotions and depths of life. And we have the moon now in Taurus, completely exactly opposite of this the sun in scorpio making a full moon but the reason that we know this is not just an average full moon and it is an eclipse is because we have the nodes very close by so we have the north node in the sign of gemini the south node in the sign of sag they are at one degree so they are literally like almost finishing their transits through these signs. So they are coming up on the cusp of the signs. And this particular Taurus full moon is happening so close to the cusp that even though they're in different signs, they're still super close. They're really only a few degrees apart. So the nodes tell us where in which signs or whereabouts we will have the uh, eclipses. The nodes have been in Gemini and Sag since May 2020, and they will move out of Gemini and Sag and into Taurus and Scorpio in January 2022. So what this means is lunar eclipses are really chaotic, intense, energetic times. There are times where the energy is going haywire. You know what I mean? It's like a zigzag. This is a peak moment. This can be close endings this can be like sudden disruptions all kinds of really intense and chaotic energy happens around full moons but especially full moon eclipses right lunar eclipses that is basically what we are seeing and because it is happening just a couple months before 
the nodes are going to move into these signs of Taurus and Scorpio where this full moon is happening. Nothing is a coincidence in astrology. Astrology is all about looking at patterns. And so this tells us that this specific lunar eclipse is showing us like a trailer, you could say, like, you know, a trailer that comes out for a movie or a show or whatever. This is a trailer of what is coming next year and even the year after you guys. So the themes that come up around this time are going to come back around. This is like a sneak peek at what's to come. So this is such an important time to be paying attention. And you know, lunar eclipses are a time of increased psychic awareness, increased intuition, increased emotions, energy. There could be a lot of edginess this week. And then a few other crazy things that is ha that are happening. This lunar eclipse is going to be squaring Jupiter and Aquarius. So it's bringing in kind of a social, societal vibe to it, you know, a humanitarian vibe to it. And because these are fixed signs. And so this is a time where we are possibly going to feel out of control. But because this is squaring Jupiter, this is going to be big. <laughs> Jupiter expands everything that it touches. And so with this lunar eclipse aspecting Jupiter in a square, this is making it that much bigger, that much broader. This is putting things on a big collective scale, likely going to be something global, national. You know, I'm talking big, big, situations, big incidents. So that is one aspect to this full moon lunar eclipse too. But we also, on top of that, have Mars coming into its exact opposition with Uranus. And this is what I really, really want to talk about um, and that we will get to for a sec, but I really just wanted to show you the chart first. When we want to figure out what is, you know, what's happening with a certain transit, we always look to the ruler of the sign because that's really the host of that planet transiting that sign. So the moon is transiting Taurus. So, but the ruler of Taurus is actually Venus and Venus is in Capricorn. And so another reason why this week is so fucking big, you guys, is because Venus is entering her shadow. And if you saw my November 2021 astrology video, like what you need to know about November video, go watch that if you didn't, because I went into so much depth in that video about what's coming this month, but Venus just entered shadow. Okay. At the time of this lunar eclipse in her ruling sign of Taurus. So once again, like I said, no coincidences in astrology, right? Uh, Venus is in Capricorn. So there's going to be a Venus in Capricorn vibe to this lunar eclipse, depending on where you have Capricorn in your chart. And then we also have on the other end, the sun in Scorpio, Mercury in Scorpio and Mars in Scorpio and Mars rules Scorpio. So these are two very powerful powerful signs right now because Scorpio has its ruling sign and Taurus or its ruling planet. Taurus has its exalted planet visiting the moon. So, and Venus, its ruling planet is entering into shadow, getting prepared to go retrograde, uh, which we're also going to talk about. So I just wanted to show you the chart really quick so you could get an idea of what the hell is happening here. And now we're going to actually talk about what the fuck this means. <laughs> So the lunar eclipse in Taurus, the moon being in Taurus signifies some kind of peak moment or some kind of ending with Taurian energy. Our old habits, our old value systems, our old attachments to a certain way of doing things with Taurian energy, so money, the economy, things that make us comfortable, material things, uh, food, you know, also like the food industry, all of these like Taurian things, the things that Taurus rules, which really it rules over anything in the material world that we, you know, take pleasure in. Our attachments to these things or our habits involving these things, there's something ending. There is something kind of tumbling down. I do kind of get like a weird good energy with this eclipse though. Like it's kind of scary, but it's also kind of exciting like at the same time, you know, with the Mars Uranus opposition, it's like, fuck yeah, you know what I mean? But then with the lunar eclipse and all the, the Scorpio energy and Venus and Capricorn uh, getting ready to move into shadow and the square to Jupiter, it's kind of like, oh no, you know, at the same time. So, but this is bringing up certain attachments that we have to a certain lifestyle, a certain way of doing things, material things in the material world, our values, 
the, the things that we feel we are worth, the things that we feel we deserve. And it is almost like, hey, something needs to be like let go of here or looked at here or there's some kind of peak moment that forces us to look at it or there's some kind of ending that happens that kind of forces us into the position of change. That I think kind of sums up what we're gonna be seeing on a global scale. Where has our attachments to physical comfort, to beauty or pleasure or food or whatever the case, gotten us in situations that are not sturdy or stable anymore? Right, and I think this is gonna be a collective thing right now. We could definitely see major financial things happening for this Taurus lunar eclipse. Really, really big financial things. We could see things with jobs, specifically in the US, jobs, health, and you know workers' rights, different human rights movements with that Aquarian energy as well, because this is happening in the US's sixth house. But you could notice some of those things in your own personal life. Taurus likes things to be reliable, stable, and steady. It, it can be stubborn and stuck in its ways at times as well, but what this lunar eclipse is showing us is where something is dying that we don't wanna face like in the old world or the old idea of the world that we had, the old attachments to certain things that we had are no longer like holding up anymore. They're no longer worth it or they are not actually giving us things that are steady or giving us results that are steady, stable, or reliable anymore. So this is definitely going to bring up themes involving resources, money, the economy, um, our monetary system. We could definitely see something big arise with farmers or the farming industry, food, materialism, the wealthy, agriculture, beauty. This is a time of really getting down to the nitty gritty of what really matters. And this is just a glimpse of what's to come, remember, because Venus and Capricorn moving into shadow really backs a lot of what I just set up because Capricorn is about the necessities, the nitty gritty. What is actually important? What do we need to build some kind of foundation or to have a sturdy foundation that's actually of quality that is practical? Venus and Capricorn is coming up to her retrograde on Pluto, which also rules over the economy in a lot of ways and being in Capricorn, the structures that hold up our economy and Pluto being destruction and change and complete transformation. So there is a lot of changes that we are seeing to do with the economy, money, food supply, industries, corporations, businesses, agriculture, all of these different things are kind of coming to a head and there's all of these themes revolving around those specific topics. The astrology is really showing us like, hey, you know, if is this necessary? Are there other things that you could prepare for that would make you more comfortable? That would that actually matter? Like what's important, especially with all of the holidays coming up, all of this crazy astrology going on around the holidays, it's gonna be really important to lead out what is actually important to you at the end of the day and what isn't. And once again, as I said in my November astrology video, I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't necessarily do anything. I'm just saying what I see in the astrology do with it what you will. Either way, I think there's going to be a level of being unprepared on most fronts. I could certainly be more prepared for what's coming. And I also talked a lot more about what's coming. I will link that down below. And I'm gonna do separate videos for my channel specifically where I go over even more, so don't worry, that's coming. But so this Taurus lunar eclipse is, is really kind of a powerful time a powerful moment bringing up themes of major financial and economical changes and giving us a preview of what's coming in 2022 and showing us where our values are possibly not really aligned with this new world and also where we need to change what we value. What we value may be outdated. What is desirable, worthy, what is reliable is changing in some way. This is a time where we are really seeing what's worth it and what isn't, right? Somewhere in our lives. And even if just in your personal life, it could be, oh, this relationship is not worthy for me anymore. Oh, this family member is just not worthy of my energy anymore. I can't keep doing this, so I need to distance myself. This friend, whatever, it may not necessarily be 
financial for everybody, but we're definitely gonna see a large financial, economical, job-related theme, and also food, agriculture, farming, et cetera theme. So definitely watch out for those themes and let me know if you see them. Now let's talk about the Mars-Uranus opposition. This is the big one. I mean, the Taurus lunar eclipse is fucking huge too, but also we have Mars opposite Uranus, <laughs> like literally coming into its opposition right before this eclipse hits. Mars-Uranus is like, it is on, you know, especially Mars and Scorpio. This is like some kind of crazy punk rocker that's like super impulsive or something. I can't think of like anybody right off the top of my head. Mars Uranus is going to be intense, intense urges towards freedom, human rights, liberation, individuality, independence. This is gonna be very in a very impulsive time and a very chaotic time, just chaos. <laughs> this can also bring though like sudden breakthroughs, awakenings, busting out of some kind of stagnant energy that you've been stuck in forever and you're finally like, yes, I am free. Or you make some kind of choice to chop something off. Mars Uranus is like jackass. <laughs> if you're from my generation, you remember the jackass movies that is like Mars Uranus okay it's very humorous but it's also like wild there can be massive defiance around this time fights involving liberation and freedom an extreme intense amount of energy and electricity like running through your body we could also see electrical issues we could also see severe weather issues. This could be like an earthquake, a hurricane, a tsunami, a volcano. I did predict uh, possible volca volcanoes in my November astrology video, but this is a very erotic, eccentric, seductive, rebellious type energy. You know, this is severely, severely rebellious. This is like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna go that way or I'm not gonna play by your rules. We could see intense protests, we could see riots. There could also be a lot of extremism, extreme behaviors as well, recklessness, fights that end up like going completely out of hand where just some story that's like, tragic but like like a like a freak accident you know what i mean like somebody getting struck by lightning or somebody like dying or getting into some kind of accident in some really crazy out of this world way this can also be sexual liberation and feminine liberation in a lot of ways like we could see something coming up with women women's rights women's sexuality we could see something being revealed in regards to sexual abuse and sexual liberation but either way this is a good transit for the most part for a lot of people this will feel like i have the courage now to do it i'm i'm i had a breakthrough i had an awakening i had a realization i had a light bulb moment you know like this is an energy where we can finally do something that we've been needing to do but we've been scared and this is like i'm breaking out of my shell or through facing the fear mars and scorpio we find freedom and liberation and so and we find individuality we find truth this is also a big big truth transit so we could see a lot coming out about truth and people speaking their truth asserting their truth in some kind of way on the other side of this there could this could also be an attraction to danger or sexual situations that are <laughs> that are dangerous in some way or just secretive and shady like cheating or the desire to kind of do something that you've never done before but it ends up being weird or something like that and this can also be very shocking things coming up as well like shocking news shocking accidents you want to be very careful driving, doing anything that's risky around this time, that could be dangerous, right? Doing anything that could be dangerous or risky, you wanna be very, very careful with, because like I said, freak accidents, you know, this is a risk taker kind of energy. This is like thrill, thrill seeking, adrenaline rush kind of energy. Not that it's all bad, you know, but those are some of the other ways it can play out. And with Mars and Scorpio, you know, this is dark energy. It deals with death and dark situations, hidden situations, creepy situations. Why we saw like the whole astro world thing, which I also kind of talked about themes of in my November astrology video that matched up with a lot of the themes I talked about where you think you're going to this, you know, wild concert and it gets too wild and it gets too out of control and there's a fucking stampede at the time Mars is squaring Saturn, you know, Mars square Saturn is like literally a stampede. I just thought that was just crazy literal, but then it gets really dark and people are dying, you know, and so you, you just have to be 
somewhat careful, and it's not going to be for all people, but for some people, they may experience this energy in a very dark, twisted kind of way that goes a little bit too far or gets a little bit too extreme, and then next thing you know, you're you're in this like shit show. That is basically Mars Uranus. There can also be restlessness and anxiety this week. Um, I know I've been feeling very restless. I've been feeling more anxious than usual, so you can notice that too. It can be hard to keep your focus, hard to pay attention. You may have a lot of different things kind of bouncing around. So yeah, we are basically letting go and breaking free of old attachments to what is beautiful, what is necessary, what is reliable, or old values, old material attachments, and an old material world. That is basically what this time frame is about. And even if you don't notice it completely around this lunar eclipse, because of how it's hitting your chart or some, in some way, you may look back, you know, at some point in the next couple years and realize, oh, it actually started then. I just didn't see it at the time, if that makes sense. But something is kind of ending, but also getting prepared to start around this time. And you really want to pay attention to what that is in your life and let me know down below if you are aware of what it is. All right, with all that finally out of the way, I know that took a little bit longer than usual. If you are still with me and you watched all of the first part, you are a mother effing badass. Let me know down below. And we are going to get into the zodiac signs and how this is going to affect your sign. As always, your rising sign will resonate most, okay? Because these horoscopes are based off of your rising sign, which is based off of how your actual chart is set up. That is how I read them in these horoscopes. So you definitely want to make sure that you watch your rising sign because that's going to resonate most. So let's get into it. Alrighty, Taurus, starting with you since it is a lunar eclipse in your sign, which is going to be lighting up your first house of self, your appearance, your body, who you are, your identity, all of these things, you know, your lifestyle, anything from the viewpoint of you, your life, what you want. And so this lunar eclipse is likely really bringing up some powerful change regarding those things, regarding yourself, maybe your health, your body. You could be going through a time where you are really ending certain like versions of you you know what i mean like where you're really reflecting on who you used to be and who you are now and it could feel like a time of closure but on top of that we have all of this opposition in your opposite sign of scorpio where there could be a lot going on in terms of your relationships and other people in your life as well. So you could be going through a time where you are breaking free of a relationship or a connection with someone, or somebody else is making a decision that ends up liberating you and breaking you free in some way, where you end up getting some kind of revelation, realization, light bulb moment, or um, insight about a relationship in your life. And somehow this could involve the future, your career, where you're going, or your partner's career, um, authority figures, you know, what you want to build in life, your legacy, etc. So what I see here is basically there seems to be for at least a lot of Taurus risings these ideas and this expansion that is wanted and desired in terms of your future, the legacy you want to leave behind, your career, where you're going in life, your goals in life, your future goals, you know, where you're headed in life, like the pinnacle that you want to reach in your life in some way. But there is some kind of opposition there with your relationships or some kind of setback or something that needs to be faced regarding a relationship or a person in your life. And so this could be a time where you are experiencing intense realizations and breakthroughs about yourself. And it could also, as much as it's a time of like closure and endings and peak moments and changes, it can also be a time where you start feeling more comfortable and aligned with who you are again. You know, it's like you're getting back to yourself in some way by facing these fears and relationships or by, you know, seeing a certain future, a certain vision for your future and what it is that you want for your future. And so 
you may feel an intense energy this week of wanting to break free or wanting to rebel against somebody in your life or something that they're doing, wanting to shake things up in some way, or your partner could be feeling that way. One of you, somebody in your life or you is feeling this way. There could be a lot of impulsivity this week where it's like, you know, someone does something and your reaction is like very sporadic and like chaotic and maybe even a little bit uh, confusing to people, but you are doing what is best for you. And this is a time of getting back to self and releasing attachments to either old people, old ideas, old future goals and releasing attachments to old versions of yourself is really like the number one thing and that I see here for you Taurus. Uh, this could somehow also involve travel or uh, you know education or just potential you know what I mean are you really seeing your potential is this what you really want is this what you really deserve is this what you're really worth is this actually reliable is this situation this person this job, this career, this vision for your future, is this actually reliable and steady for you now? Is this actually what you want, you know? For some of you, you could be shaking things up and seeing that you want something else or that it's not entirely what you thought it was and there could be cycles kind of coming back or echoing back from around your birthday this year or for others of you, somebody else in your life, your partner or just somebody that you're close to, somebody that you have a one-on-one -on -one connection with in your life or a commitment with in your life, they could be doing things or kind of being the instigator here and you could be kind of responding to that. But in a way, whatever they do, if that's you, if it's somebody else that is instigating something, whatever this is, is somehow liberating you from something, even if you don't see it right off the bat. So keep that in mind, Taurus. But that is what I am seeing for you guys, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if any of this resonates or what you are noticing in your life or both. I would really, really love to know. I'm very invested here. Okay. So you need to let me know what's going on. So um, yeah, we're gonna move on to Gemini. Alrighty, Gemini, for you, this lunar eclipse, this full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening in your 12th and 6th house. The moon is in your 12th, the sun and Mars and Mercury are in your 6th. And so this is intense breakthroughs for you, Gemini, um, but they can feel more subconscious or it could be something from the past something that you are letting go of, something that you are ending, like really intense endings, really intense closure that's happening here, or even forgiveness that may need to happen. But it's like you are breaking free from some kind of self-sabotaging pattern or behavior that has been really affecting your day-to-day -day life in some way. It's like you, there's something here that needs to be purged, that needs to be let out, and it can feel quite dramatic or it can feel quite intense or it can feel quite chaotic or sporadic or crazy or all over the place. You may not be getting a lot of sleep this week. I will tell you that um, with this happening in your 12th house, your sleep schedule may be disrupted with this or you know, your attention may be all over the place. You may have like anxiety or subconscious things going on. But this is all because this is something that's like building for you that needs to be purged. It's like an explosion happening this week where it's like, okay, whatever this is in my day-to-day -day life that's manifesting, it's manifesting from the things that I'm avoiding, my subconscious, or how I'm taking care of myself behind closed doors. And so this is really pulling you to take care of yourself, to leave the other shit behind. Like, yes, there may be some kind of demands or responsibility that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis that's maybe getting a little bit intense or a little bit too much or a little bit like over the top or overwhelming. Um, but this Taurus lunar eclipse is coming in like, hey, you need to let that shit go. You need to break free of that shit. You need to take care of yourself. You need to pamper yourself. Like you need to do the things that are going to give you some kind of stability uh, in your subconscious realm and in the realm of healing and you know things that you're not wanting to look at or things that are kind of behind the scenes so this could be a week where you're feeling a little bit more detached from your day-to-day -day life and all of the ins and outs of that's going on like at work or with people friends whatever uh you could be feeling a little bit more like internal this week because this lunar eclipse is really pushing you inwards it is pushing you to start considering things that are worth it. It's showing you that 
healing and uh, closure and letting go and endings is worth it and that you deserve it. But that's not going to happen if you don't think you deserve it. You know what I mean? And so you have to kind of balance that out here. And it's also giving you a preview, as I said in the beginning, of what's to come next year and the year after and for part of the year after at least. So you really want to pay attention to this. So some other things that you could notice are things coming up in regards to travel, education, learning, or your kind of views and belief systems, how that is also holding you back. Um, you know, are you really seeing your true potential? Are you really seeing the bigger picture, the bigger perspective here? And then on top of that, with Venus ruling over this eclipse and in your eighth house, this could also be dealing with finances, debt, losses, um, you know, things like big, big life changes or uh, things that you're dealing with with somebody else's finances or your partner's finances, shared resources, shared finances, you know, things that really need to be addressed here. This is also kind of somewhat a preview of what's coming the next couple months as well as Venus is moving into shadow. And so, yeah, this is, uh, this is a time of really intense breakthroughs for you that can really impact your day-to-day -day emotional well-being, your day-to-day -day health, you know, day-to-day -day habits and, you know, things that you're doing that may be affected by this particular, by these particular things that are kind of behind the scenes that you haven't been addressing. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated. I'd really, really, really Really, really, really love to hear your feedback and what ends up happening for you for this lunar eclipse. I'm very, very invested and interested. So definitely make sure you comment down below for this one. And we are gonna move on to Cancer. All right, Cancer darling. This full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of friends and goals and your social life and social groups that you belong to, you know, social situations, networking, all of that jazz. And so this could be a, a time where all of these things are getting brought up and not to mention, it's also showing you a preview of what's to come next year. And so this could be a time of possibly big endings, like big surprising endings regarding friendships or groups or social connections. This could be a surprise peak moment involving, you know, maybe a, a, a switching your dreams, your aspirations, you know, what it is that you like, where it is that you fit in and what really aligns with you and your passions, you know, because all this Scorpio energy is in your fifth house of what you're deeply passionate about. Um, also love, romance, you know, creativity, children, all of that. So this could definitely be a time where it's like you could be closing the door on maybe some kind of old, uh, aspiration that you had, or this could be reigniting that aspiration as well for some of you. But it can be a really intense breakthrough as well with friends and friendships and connections in your life too. Another place that you could see some things coming up is your eighth house sector with Jupiter squaring this lunar eclipse in your eighth house of other people's money, finances, resources, shared assets, shared resources and money, uh, debt, and also pretty big life changes. And so this could be a time where, uh, you know, maybe you feel like, you know, certain people aren't really living up to your own values in terms of what you expect from other people or the energy that you're putting in is not being reciprocated somehow, or maybe you're helping other people financially or with resources or just putting a lot of time and energy into people that it's not where it's not being reciprocated and so something needs to shift here you know that's another way that you could see this playing out and also you could see this playing out with a relationship as well or a certain one-on-one -on -one connection in your life this is a really really big week and really next few weeks and next few months of and next year i guess i should say uh, of connections in your life and relationships in your life you know your aspirations your goals and how possibly certain relationships are holding you back from your aspirations or goals or certain demands are holding you back from your aspirations your goals or connecting with people the way that you want to or connecting with the people that you want to connect with you know it's like 
you may want to start getting out there and networking more and focusing on your dreams and your passions and your goals, but there could be something holding you back financially or with a partner or something along those lines, and you could really start noticing that in the months and year to come. So let me know down below, Cancer, if this ended up resonating with you. I would really, really love to hear your feedback and hear what happens for your lunar eclipse this week and what all you notice coming up in your life and in the world. And if any of this relates, and even if not, I just love to hear what you did notice in your life. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And we are gonna move on to Leo. Alrighty, my lovely fellow Leo Risings, this is for you. Wow, this lunar eclipse is happening in our 10th house of career, public image, reputation, you know, what it is that we want to do in the world, the direction that we want to go in life, authority figures, and where we want to achieve recognition and where like the legacy that we want to build, you know, the, the things that we want to achieve, our goals, what we are working towards or moving towards with this particular transit of this lunar eclipse in our 10th house and all of this stuff in our fourth house of the past and family and home and nostalgia and really reminiscing on the past, you know, old memories, etc. This could be a really intense time where maybe we change something in regards to our vision for the future or our vision regarding relationships or our vision regarding our career reputation what we what we want to do out in the world what we want to be known for and what we want to build our goals you know our values are shifting in terms of our careers and this is a preview of what's to come um, this next year and really also these next few months with venus going into shadow in our sixth house this is really big about work for Leo Risings, but also relationships. And so, for instance, what I've personally noticed already coming up with this lunar eclipse is I've been uh, the last couple of days reflecting on my journey on YouTube. So a lot of people may not know this, but I had a first channel before this where I did completely different stuff. I did makeup and like commentary on different things that were going on. I used to think like, you know, at, well, at least once I started doing tarot and astrology, I started thinking, oh, that wasn't me, you know, like that. Whoever I was on that other channel was just not me. And like over like the last couple of days, I've been really reflecting on my YouTube journey. And this is like my career at the moment, right? 10th house Taurus, which is why I'm bringing this up. And then fourth house, like really reminiscing on the past and stuff. I started like, I went to my old channel, which is now private. And I started watching some of my old videos and I was like, wow, actually I was me. <laughs> like I, I really was me and I was actually really happy doing that for a while, but eventually it just didn't resonate with me anymore and that's okay, you know, but a lot of it, I really was me and I was, I was a lot more uh, kind of carefree with the things that I said. That was like a really big realization for me. And then I also looked back at my old videos on this channel and my journey on this channel and just how great I was doing for a really long time until I started becoming inconsistent, which kind of did a number on my channel and I've been kind of trying to work back at that uh, for a while now. But anyway, so it's just interesting. It's just been bringing up a lot of like interesting revelations in terms of career and who I am now versus who I was then. And yes, I'm like wiser and I've learned more, but I, I there's, parts of me that I can still uh, express, you know what I mean? And that I wanna like bring back, so to say. And so it can be a time of closure in regards to career. It can be a time of career shifts or career changes, or it can be a time of really seeing like, oh, this may not be the path for me anymore, or somehow career may be disrupting uh, your home and family life or your home and family life may be disrupting career. Uh, there could also be maybe some kind of intense disagreements or impulsive decisions with the people in your life. Oh my God, that's a spider. That's a fucking spider. Holy shit. I'm sorry. Hold on. Sorry about that, Leo. So uh, yeah, so this could be really big moments of clarity, light bulb moments. or letting go uh, of certain attachments regarding career, your future, your goals, you know, all of these types of things, your professional life. It's a time of a pretty big preview of also what you're going to be working on next year. So that is what I see for you guys, Leo. Definitely let me know down below if this ended up resonating. I really, really 
We really love to hear how you guys are feeling this energy, how my fellow Leo Risings are noticing this energy coming up or these themes coming up. And even if it doesn't all the way resonate, you can let me know what you do see because I'm very, very interested to hear what you guys have to say. Like for real, I would really like to know. So let me know down below and we are gonna move on to Virgo. Alrighty, Virgo, this eclipse is happening in your ninth house of your belief systems, your worldview your political views, your religious views, all of that great shit. Also, travel and what it is that you want to do when you grow up. <laughs> Just kidding. Not necessarily what it is that you want to do when you grow up, but like the way that you look at the world, your beliefs, your faith, and your potential. You know what I mean? Also, education. And so these are some themes that you could see coming up around this time. It's kind of like your views on something are drastically possibly changing over this next week or over these next few months or over the, this next year. Uh, you may have a massive shift that kind of triggers a certain belief system that you thought was solid or a certain perspective that you thought you know, was solid. It's like you had a perspective on something or you thought you knew something that maybe is not exactly what you thought. So uh, this Lunar Eclipse can definitely trigger something that shows you another side of something or that brings out some kind of truth. This could also be like an awakening of sorts for Virgo Risings or like a massive realization, a massive light bulb moment or some kind of closure uh, from the past uh, for some people. We also have this full moon lunar eclipse squaring Jupiter in your sixth house of work, health, daily routines, diet, your workplace, you know, things like this. So this could be bringing up, you know, some work stuff that is possibly really triggering certain belief systems or views that you have. And so it's kind of forcing you to let go of or shift your worldviews in some way, or it could be, you know, you getting your workplace to kind of cater more to your views in some way or it could also be your health your diet your routine or certain illnesses that you are uh, or health issues that you're having that somehow you awaken to like a new idea on how to go about these or you realize that it has something to do with your train of thought or your views on them something with workplace and views and beliefs and all of that are going to be really coming up around this time and also with Venus and Capricorn in your fifth house, you know, you're reconsidering what it is that you love, what it is that you're passionate about. And over the next few months, you will be really reconsidering what it is that you love, what it is that you're passionate about, where your heart is, where your joy is, what, you know, what you love to do and, and also creative energy as well. So all of these things are coming up around this time and will ripple into next year as well. So definitely pay attention to what's coming up because like I said in the beginning, it's giving us a sneak peek of what's coming in next year. So uh, yeah, definitely let me know down below Virgo if you are seeing these themes come up in your life and what you're thinking about them, what you're feeling about them. And even if you're not seeing these themes come up, let me know what themes you do see come up because uh, I'd be really interested to know. Uh, so yeah, comment down below. Let's keep the convo going and we're going to move on to Libra. Alrighty, Libra, my fellow Librans, but this is going to resonate more if you're a Libra rising. But yeah, so uh, this is happening in your eighth house, this lunar eclipse is. And so it's really lighting up that really intense and heavy place of transformation, debt, death, loss, uh, you know, big life changes that can be shocking or that can really, you know, transform your life in some way that you didn't see coming. Um, and so this lunar eclipse is a little bit more intense if you are a Libra rising uh, specifically because of this reason. And so you could notice a lot of things coming up with financial 
uh, you know, your finances. You could notice some things coming up with your partner's finances, shared resources, shared assets, shared finances. So anything that you share with another person, like if you have a roommate, then you share your home. If you uh, have a partner, then you may share, you know, the bills, you know, something along those lines or even like child support or money that's owed to you, a loan, taxes, you know, all of these things are ruled under the eighth house and also the eighth house rules taboo things. But it is a time that really is about things that we need to let go of in life. And sometimes that can happen and be out of our control. And so this could feel like a time where something is out of your control and you're not exactly 100% sure how to go about it and something could be triggered and it's like, okay, so how do I deal with this? But it's really showing you certain attachments that you may have to something that you don't need anymore or that this energy is liberating you from in a weird way. And it's also squaring Jupiter in your fifth house of love, romance, passion, joy, where you find your joy and meaning in life, like in creative self-expression, also children. So these themes could be coming up as well. You know, you could be noticing the truth about a lover and this would be like a lover that you're probably not like really invested in. So this is more for you guys that are dating um, or something happening. Like if like a lover lover, someone that you're dating's finances come up for some reason, or you're, if you have a child, like a grown child, their finances could be coming up for some reason. Or this could be like, you know, you're really wanting to do something you love, yet you have these financial obligations and things that you're trying to break free of in some way. And this could also involve your home and family too, you know, your home and family environment in some way, where or your living situation in some way as well, Libra. So those are some things that you can notice, but do keep in mind, this is a preview of what is coming next year. And so whatever it is that comes up around this time, whether you need to let go of it, whether it's an ending, whether it's just a peak moment, or whether it's some kind of insight into a situation keep that in mind because it's going to come back around. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra. Definitely let me know down below. I would really, really be interested to know, especially for you guys, how this lunar eclipse plays out for you and what you're seeing come up in your life. So definitely comment down below and let me know. And make sure you let me know that you're a Libra rising and all of that. Uh, and yeah, so let me know and we're gonna move on to Scorpio. Alrighty, Scorpio, this lunar eclipse is happening in your opposite sign of Taurus and your seventh house of relationships, your partner, um, also marriage partner or just significant relationships in your life. They don't always have to be like a romantic, intimate marriage partner kind of relationship. So, um, but either way, it's bringing up someone significant in your life that may have something surprising, shocking, or unpredictable going on in their life that may show you that something is out of your grasp or something is not in your control in some way. Um, this can also be a time where your partner or someone significant in your life is going through something uh, very liberating or very erratic or chaotic. And you could be trying to help them or guide them, but they, you guys may be at odds for some reason, you know, you could be trying to control the situation and they could, it could kind of be out of your control. And so there could be some opposition here for you, Scorpio, with someone significant in your life, like either you're not getting along or if you are getting along, maybe you're just not seeing eye to eye or you're having trouble like actually getting a hold of the situation um or they are and so this could be kind of triggering a lot of revelations with you and relationships what you actually want in a relationship freedom in relationships uh individuality independence in relationships uh being able to express yourself freely in relationships all of these themes could be coming up for you around this time and also we have this lunar eclipse squaring jupiter uh, in your fourth house of home family your living situation your roots your past and so things from there it could be coming up as well for this lunar eclipse and there could be some kind of past issues that come up or, uh, you know, you could be, you know, you could remember a lot from your childhood or growing up or something with your, like your parents. So a lot of this could be coming up around this time for you to see and address and see the bigger picture of what's going on here or see some kind of pattern that you may be stuck in. 
And then also the ruler of this lunar eclipse, Venus, is in your third house of communication, uh, your siblings, relatives, your environment, learning, and the things that you do on kind of like a day-to-day -day basis. And so you could be seeing a lot of stuff coming up. You know, like I could see some, I could see for some of you, this could be like maybe you're taking care of a partner and a lot of the responsibility is coming on you because they have something crazy going on. Um, and this is just an example. I'm not saying all of you guys would be going through this, but some of you guys could be where it's like you're having to pick up on the errands and, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff that you have to do. I could also see you running into someone from your past or someone coming back around from your past or some kind of unresolved issue from the past coming up that needs to be addressed here. And I could also see your perspective or your perception on a relationship or a situation in your life starting to change and that will really become apparent over these next couple months. So watch out for that too. Okay, so, but that is basically what I'm seeing here for you, Scorpio. There's a lot of breakthroughs and unexpected, out of control kind of energy going on in your relationships around this time where you may be trying to force something or have your way with something, but it may not be cooperating. And so it may force you to kind of let go of certain attachments and certain dependent situations in your life that are no longer working for you. It's like, you know, Am I going to stay true to these old values or these old past habits? Or am I going to break free and do something new and worry about me? You know what I mean? So that could be another thing that some of you guys see coming up. But definitely let me know down below if this resonated. And also remember, these are things that you're going to be seeing in the months and year ahead. And so this is why this is such a crucial starting point for you to like let go of things so you don't have to keep dealing with the same situation. If that resonates for you. It may not be like that for all of you, but uh, yeah, let me know down below. I would really, really love to hear your feedback on what you're noticing for this lunar eclipse and this week and this energy. It just, I'm very invested. I would like to know. Okay. So let me know down below and uh, yeah, we're going to move on to Sagittarius. Alrighty, Sagittarius. So this lunar eclipse is happening in your sixth house of your daily routines, your health, your diet, health issues, any, you know, health stuff that's coming up. And really like the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, like maintenance, like things that you have to do to have the lifestyle that you want to have. You know, this house can rule over like servants and things like that because it's like unglamorous stuff, like the unglamorous responsibilities that you have and obligations that you have to keep up with things in your life to live how you want to live. And that's why it rules things like health maintenance and health issues because you can't really have the life that you want to have if you have all this health stuff. You know what I mean? That's why it rules like work because also same thing. You know what I mean? So with this lunar eclipse happening in your sixth house of all those things, you could see those things coming up. Now, what this is really pointing out is that, you know, you may be attached to or dependent on a certain routines or uh, things that are just no longer of quality to you. It's like you no longer need them or they are not actually worth it anymore. It's really bringing up what is worth it. What do you need to break free from? Uh, what do you need to like, you know, liberate yourself from in order to have the life that you want to have, the work, the unglamorous work that you need to do uh, that needs to be done in order for you to live how you want to live. Now, on top of that, you know, we have a lot going on, or at least this, you know, lunar eclipse is squaring Jupiter down in your third house. This could be really bringing up, like, this would be a really great time to learn something new or to learn more about whatever issues that you're having or to talk to people, network, figure out what other people are doing, maybe do some research, look on social media, etc. But the problem I think here for you, Sag, is that you can be very stubborn with 
certain routines or certain things that you do to keep up with yourself, your maintenance, etc. It's like, I've always done them this way and I don't want to change, you know, like, but this lunar eclipse is giving you a taste of a certain shift that needs to be made in regards to these things. It doesn't have to necessarily be a complete change for everyone. Some people may experience it like that, but others, it just may be getting innovative and figuring out a new way to do it or, you know, trading one thing for another. Like it's not always going to be like as dramatic but this could be something that gets brought up that's unexpected for some people regarding those themes that I've already named so work or health and also with Jupiter in your third this could bring up relatives cousins neighbors siblings you know and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis your environment transportation and so you know this would be a really great time to start a journey into learning about these issues that you may be having in these areas of life and also how self-sabotaging behaviors with all of the Scorpio energy in your 12th house are working against your day-to-day -day reality and manifesting the things that you want in your day-to-day -day reality. And so those are other things that you could see come up. We also have Venus in your second house of money, finances, priorities, resources. And so this is getting practical and realistic about your priorities, your money, your resources, and how this also relates and with everything else that we were just talking about. And so this is a time where you are really looking at getting serious, practical, or building some kind of steady foundation for yourself in regards to what you have, what you own, but also what you deserve, Sag. And this has a lot to do with self-worth and deserving. Like, feeling worthy enough of something new. And so instead of continuing to go against yourself and self-sabotage, you know, it's time to like actually heal these things and also bring the healing into the physical. So, and this can be a time where you are really liberated. Like a, a lunar eclipse here in your sixth house could mean that you quit some kind of bad habit or that you quit smoking or you quit, you know, drinking soda, you know what I mean? Or you start eating differently. Like this can be a really, really great time if you can not be super, super stubborn about it and try to stick to what you know and actually branch out and learn some new things. And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Sag. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback with this, with this one, especially because it's just so crazy. Like I just would really like to hear what you guys experience. And even if it doesn't resonate all the way, like, uh, cause there are other ways this can play out, you know, but even if it doesn't resonate all the way, I'd like I'd like to hear what you do experience. So um, yeah, we're gonna move on to Capricorn. All right, so Capricorn, uh, for you guys, this lunar eclipse is happening in your fifth house of your love, passion, romance, sexuality, children, fertility, creativity. This is really your creative self-expression. That's why it rules children, because really children are a part of you. It's creating something, right? And so it's also a place where you find pleasure and fun, like what you do for fun, where you find pleasure, where you find you know, a certain level of love and passion. And so this lunar eclipse is really bringing up those things. You could really feel this week like you want to uh, step out of your comfort zone with something or you want to get back to something that makes you passionate or that makes your heart like just feel alive. Uh, you could also really see a lot of stuff coming up with sexuality with this as well. Uh, there, This could be a time where you are feeling very eccentric, very fiery, uh, very rebellious, you know. All of these energies could be coming up uh, around this time where you could want to step out of your comfort zone with something or take some kind of risk that you wouldn't normally take uh, with something that's fun or that brings you passion or joy or etc. Now, this could also be liberating yourself. Like if you've been feeling creatively blocked in some way, this could definitely be a time where you are getting insight, revelations, ideas, you know, all kinds of stuff could be coming up. And it really is going to deal with what it is that you want, what it is that you desire, what it is that you like to do. And you could also be kind of shifting what it is that you desire in some way, what it is that you want and what you feel would make you feel good about yourself because the ruler of this lunar eclipse is in your sign, Venus. And so this has a lot to do with you too, um, yourself, your body, your image, your appearance. And so 
there's a lot kind of happening with these things for this lunar eclipse. Now, also, the lunar eclipse is squaring Jupiter in your second house of money, resources, finances, assets, priorities, worth, possessions. And so you could see those themes kind of tying into this too in some way. There could be you know, it's like you may want to break free uh, and liberate yourself creatively in some way or with some kind of passion um, or do something risky or fun or whatever, but there could be something going on financially or maybe you are being a little bit overly optimistic financially um, or something along those lines. Like you could be spending too much on having fun or you could be making like a big purchase on something that like makes you pat like that gives you passion or to find pleasure like you could be spending a lot of money to find pleasure basically in some way or this could have something to do with your children if you have children where you are spending a lot of money or there's some sudden expense that comes up or some sudden situation so you want to kind of look out for those things as well um, but definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating or uh, whatever happens because I'd really really love to hear about it and I really really would like to hear what you guys end up dealing with uh, for this lunar eclipse I'm definitely interested so let me know down below um, and we're gonna move on to Aquarius alrighty Aquarius so this lunar eclipse is pretty big for you it is happening in your fourth house of home family your living situation your past your childhood etc so you could be noticing a lot of these things come up with family, parents, home life, you know, your past, your childhood, patterns, your roots, your ancestry, all of these themes could be coming up around this time. This is a time of really shifting your foundation in some way, your comfort zone. You could be going through some period of endings or closure when it comes to home or family. Um, like some of you guys could be closing on a property or a house or finally closing on buying some land. You know, like there, there's something here going on with home and family and that you're definitely going to see. And it could come as a surprise for some of you. It could come as something unexpected. But you could also be really releasing or liberating yourself from old habits, patterns, dependencies, um, you know, old things that you thought you needed or old values that you have been hanging on to that come from your family and your background and where you grew up and all of that, um, that needs to be released because maybe they don't align with your views today in some way. And so that, that's something else that this that could come up with this configuration. Some of you guys could also see uh, a kind of like a need to release a uh, responsibility for something for some reason I want to say that kind of just came intuitively where maybe you've been feeling responsible for a family member or uh, a situation regarding your family and this may be a time where you're kind of like I have things ahead of me that are that I'm trying to worry about but I keep being kind of pulled back to either you know a family situation or a home situation and so that is another way that some of you guys could be seeing this come up but it definitely is a time where you are kind of letting go or having some closure or you know having peak moments regarding certain attachments uh, regarding your family, home life, childhood, parents, etc. Now, we also have Venus, the ruler of this eclipse, in your 12th house in Capricorn. And so you could also see, you know, once again, past cycles, patterns. Um, this is definitely a very nostalgic time for you, Aquarius. This is definitely a time where you are releasing old patterns, self-sabotaging patterns, or at least being shown them so you can release them eventually, you know. Um, you're seeing how these attachments to home, family, or a certain place, or a certain people, you know, that you're really close to, or whatever the case may be, are actually like working against you, are actually causing you to lose in certain situations, or are actually like not helpful or healthy for you, or not what you need anymore, not what you desire anymore. And so this is really showing you big endings that need to happen, big moments of liberation that you need to face like big fears you need to face 
to liberate yourself from these things uh, and also showing you like how your your beliefs about yourself could be playing a role in this and may have changed and no longer align with these you know things that you've been attached to and so uh yeah so th that's those are some things that i'm getting um with this configuration for you aquarius definitely let me know down below uh if this resonates and if you see any of these themes in your life and even if you don't let me know what you do see in your life i'd love to know how this ends up playing out for you guys and do remember this is a preview for what's to come i talked a lot about that in the beginning so if you didn't watch that part definitely go do that uh, but yeah, we are going to move on to Pisces. Alrighty, Pisces, this lunar eclipse is happening in your third house of education, learning, your environment, short travels, transportation, cousins, relatives, neighbors, siblings, uh, basically just your immediate environment and community, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the places that you frequent on a day-to-day -day basis, all of these types of things. So uh, you could be noticing those things come up. This is also really showing you uh, certain areas of your mind or certain areas of communication that you need to liberate yourself from. So what I mean by that are is like certain kind of day-to-day -day patterns that you have that are no longer working for you or some kind of truth that needs to be spoken. And we actually talked a lot about this, I remember, in your November monthly uh, reading. So definitely go check that out if you haven't because it didn't notify people. So not many Pisces saw that reading, but it's up. Uh, so this could definitely be a time of really speaking your truth, really liberating yourself in some way through expressing how you feel about something. Um, and it's like it needs to come out. It's like been boiling to this point and it's like I have to do this you know and it's really kind of also like challenging your belief systems your views you know all of this this could be possibly some kind of debate or like unexpected uh conflict or opposition uh with somebody in your life that you know that where you need to say how you feel or you need to put it out there or you need to let go of some kind of attachment to an idea a place thing a uh, person etc that and those are some things that you could see coming up now this eclipse is also squaring jupiter in your 12th house and so this could really be a time of letting go <laughs> letting go reflecting on the past seeing old cycles for what they are seeing the bigger picture of small day-to-day -day things that you've been doing you know where have you been living too much in you know kind of what's going on everywhere else and not really focusing on right here right now right like where have you put way too much focus time energy into your beliefs or what's going on in the world or what's going on from a broader perspective where have you been way too attached to that and not attached enough to right here right now daily basis you know your immediate environment kind of stuff and so that's something else that you could see come up with this you could also see a theme of friends social connections groups etc that are coming up around this time uh, a certain truth that may need to be spoken to friends or liberating yourself from some kind of connection um, so definitely let me know down below Pisces what you are seeing and if this ends up resonating I'm really really invested and I would really really like to know what ends up happening for you um, even if it doesn't resonate just let me know what does happen I would really really like to know but um, yeah if you didn't see the beginning of this go check that out because I got a lot more in the beginning of this so anyway Anyways, we are going to move on to Aries. What's up, Aries? So for this lunar eclipse, this is happening in your second house of priorities, money, finances, your own wealth, your own values, worth, possessions, and your own assets. And so this is a time where you could really be noticing these things coming up. It could be a couple things. For some of you, it could be, I can't keep doing this on my own or something that I'm doing with others or something that I'm investing in or something that I'm dealing with in a broader sense financially could be affecting my own money, my own finances, or my partner's finances could be affecting my own finances in some way uh, for some of you. Um, or this could be a time where you are like, I need more independence financially and I need more um, individuality freedom financially. And so this could be 
kind of liberating yourself from ties that are holding you back in some way uh, when it comes to the things that you need to feel secure and to feel comfortable. And so um, those are some some really big things that you could be noticing around this time. Uh, also self-worth issues, also priorities, you know. Now this eclipse is squaring Jupiter in your 11th house of friends, other people, aspirations. And so this could be a really big time where you are you know, seeing the bigger picture, you're looking ahead, you're very future focused and you want to progress in some way, uh, modernize your uh, finances, priorities, etc. And that you have your eye on some kind of prize that you are really looking at the bigger picture and you're like, this is where I want to be. And so this is what I have to do to get to where I want to be. And so this could be a time of endings or closure or peak moments regarding finances, money, etc. Now, on the flip side though, for some, this could be like, you know, a sudden change in income or a sudden shift in income or at least a stream of income, you know, something like that. So you wanna kind of watch out for that energy too. Now, on top of that, we also have Venus, the ruler of this eclipse in your 10th house of career, you know, public image, reputation, what you're doing in life, where, you, where you're headed towards, you know? So this could be, or authority figures as well, but this could be a time where you are thinking about shifting careers or asking for a raise, something along those lines where your career and what you're making from your career or your work and what you're making for your work is kind of under the spotlight for this lunar eclipse. But definitely let me know down below, Aries, what you are seeing in your life and if any of these are coming up in your life right now. I'd really, really love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, you guys are the last sign. So thank you for watching. And that is the end of this video. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye.